everyone. It's Sean Bishop here, director of Bishop Instruments and Bows. And my son has just asked me to see if, if I know all the violins that I've got in this room. And the answer is, hopefully, we're going to find out. And so I'm going to muck around. I'm going to go through every instrument without taking it out, unless I don't know from sight. And then uh, we'll see if I, know, if I do know everything here. Um, I will tell you that I own every violin in this cabinet, except for one. Right, let's go. Straight up. I can see it there. That is a, a Bernadelle. That's uh, Philippe August Sebastian Bernadelle, uh, Paris, eight, 1846, I think it is. Here we have a Simonazzi of uh, Mancha. I think he was the only pupil that did a bit of work with Scarapella. And that is a Marconcini copy made in about 1930. Bola Brothers. I always remember that. That's an 1896 Bola Brothers Stradivari copy made for the Hart and Sons. Uh, here we have Sturci, Inigno Sturci, 1924, I think it is. It's in about four books. Two books have just been published on and with pictures of it. I own it. No one's asked me, hey, can we take photos of yours? Um, so they're using all these old photos. I could give them new ones, but that's just me rambling. Bottom right, Giuseppe Marconcini, Ferrara, 1818. Totally beautiful violin, mint condition, not one crack on it. 200 year old violin. Next to that, Georges Chanot of Paris, the great Georges Chanot. The, uh, the equal of Jean Baptiste Villon, really. And he's some of his Guarneri copies and straight copies right there that equal. This one is not so much of a copy, it's a straight model, shall we say. Um, another Bola Brothers. Wow, this is a great one. This is a um, Testore copy. So it looks like a Testore, it looks old. Sounds old. Okay. Uh, next violin uh, is 1898, Enrico Marchetti of Turin. One of my favorite makers. I've got two violins by him and a viola. Right, so let's close that cabinet. So that, I've got full marks. Full marks, son? Yeah. Yeah. Thumbs up, right. The big cabinet, okay. We have Celeste, uh, oh goodness. Now, why is it, Farotti? Milan, 1901, Stradivari copy, very nice example. Riccardo Antonazzi, 1910. Another Enrico Marchetti. Uh, Chura, uh, not in Turin, we moved away from Turin. This is 1914. Label 1904, someone's mucked around to try and change that. Uh, this is uh, Rovascali. Very rare Rovascali. Made for the Antonazzi brothers, uh, Riccardo and uh, Romeo and sold obviously by them it's got the original label but it's signed by uh, himself inside even though it looks it's a it's a nice violin made in about 1920 in milan next one along is a vincenzo sanino the only naples maker who could copy everyone else and that's sort of a ventipane uh, model featured in dimitri hinden's book um, which is a nice thing to have Next to that, uh, Jean-Baptiste Villon. Very nice Stradivari copy from the 1850s. Solo tone. Come, you, need a, you want a Vio like Hilary Hahn? Come and buy one. Here it is. Right, down the bottom here, André Guarneri. It's an André Guarneri composite. The, everything is André Guarneri except the top, which is made by John Betts of London to fit the violin. So it's a nice match. Vola Brothers, have a look at that. There you go, Stradivari copy, another one of them. Um, very beautiful example. One of my favourite Naples makers, Giuseppe uh, Pistucci, Giovanni Pistucci, not Giuseppe, Giovanni Pistucci of Naples, 1890, Naples, very nice example with original label. Uh, then we get to some sort of Frenchies, we've got uh, Gond and Bernadelle, uh, 1870 I think that is from memory, around that area, um, nice example, sounds really good, they made so many violins, a bit like the Hills, but actually, and so I only buy ones that I really like, and that's one that sounds great. Jacques Thibault, Paris, 1826, I think. One of the truly great makers of, of the uh, early 19th century in Paris. Doesn't get enough um, of a write-up, really. That is a great violin, under 100,000 pounds, hard to beat. Next to it, Cesare Candy of Genova. I love the Genovese school. You think Candy, uh, there's loads of them. And uh, that's a very nice example. Down the bottom line, another uh, Giovanni Pistucci, later, 1920. Um, beautiful examples, very straight one. That's a, they're, they're usually Galliano copies, as the other one was, but this one's very straight, nice example. Down the bottom, another Giovanni, 
they stood together and it was just showy, showy. You see? So there we go. That's sort of looking like looking like a Galliano. That's more straight, but this one's a bit more expensive. But very nice. Right, let's move along to the next thing. I think I'm so far winning, aren't I? Yeah. I'm able to ramble at, at will. Um, Paolo Erba, 1902, Milan. He made instruments for the Busy Axe, and this one is absolutely gorgeous. What a violin. Um, if you have a chance, look at my website, picture of the Paolo Erba. Stefano Scarampello, the great Mantuan maker of the uh, turn of the century. This is made in eight, uh, 1918. Probably one of the last ones that he made by himself before Gaetano Gatto got heavily involved. Really nice example. Next to it, we have um, Della Corta of Naples. Uh, a maker we don't really know a lot about, actually. But that's, I've got two of those, and that's, that's a really fine example. Next to it, Fagnola, the great Turin master. After Presenda and Rocca, then you hit Marchetti, and then you hit Fagnola. Um, he's one of my favorite makers. This is a Presenda model, sort of circa 1910. Uh, and this one is really made to look old. It's got a few cracks that have been repaired, so you, it's, it was probably sold as Presenda at one stage. Nice violin. The bottom row, we've got um, Giovanni Rota of Cremona, one of the late great Cremonese makers, 1809. Beautiful, sounds like a Strad. It's got power, it's got everything, and it's a beautiful violin. Next to it, Dagani, Eugenio Dagani, the great Venetian maker. Um, this is made in 1892, I think. I've got two of those Daganis. They're on my website somewhere. That was made for his next door neighbor. How about that? Um, I knew this one was going to stump me. Um, oh, I, I, I'm going to have to have a peek at the label. This is actually featured in a book, a couple of books actually. Um, really nice. It was recently, the, they had a big. Uh, exhibition of the Geneva Makers, and this was exhibited in that. And, ah, yes, Rastelli, how could I forget? Lu Ludvicchio Rastelli, 1875. Okay, beautiful violin, sounds great. Look at that. And then, lucky last, actually, the last of the great Cremonese, you'd probably say, Enrico Ciruti of Cremona, uh, 1848. That's a really beautiful violin of his, one piece top. Um, just exquisite workmanship. Okay, so there we go. I got them all right except one. I'll try better next time. Well, hopefully they'll be sold when I do this next year. Right. Anyway, I wish you all the very best. Until next time. Bye bye. <laughs>